everybody, it's Brian, and in this episode, we're going to talk about the algorithm Q Delete All, which deletes all items in a range using the C++ delete operator. Now, why do we need this? For example, let's say we want to work with a list of Q objects. Remember, a Q object cannot be copied. So if we're going to put this in a container, we have to put a pointer to it in the container. Pointers, of course, come with the overhead that we manage the memory. Q delete all makes that super simple. Here's a great example. You can delete the entire container and then you have to clear it out. The major caveat here is this will not remove the items, just free up that memory. For this example, I've already got some code written. We have just a simple test class as a constructor and a deconstructor. And if we switch over here, you can see we're just going to QInfo out constructed and deconstructed so we can see that object's lifecycle. Let's dive in and take a look. First thing we're going to do here is get a list of pointers. So we've got that test class and we're going to put that into a list. And because it's a Q object, we have to work with pointers. To make life super, super simple, I'm going to do a type def. If you're still new to C++, basically this allows us to make some type of alias. So I'm going to say Q list. And we want the test class and we're going to be working with pointers. So we're just making a list of pointers and we're going to call that test list. So basically, we're kind of like pseudo creating our own data type here. That being said, whenever we use test list, you guessed it, it's going to use this instead it makes it super convenient. So we don't have to type this out over and over again. Now from here, let's go ahead and say we want to make a function that's going to return our test list. And let's call it get list. Now inside of this, we're going to you guessed it, make a test list, call it list. And let's just generate some pointers here. So I'm gonna say four, and we want int i equals zero, i is less than and I'm just gonna arbitrarily pick a number five. And we're gonna say i increment. So all we're going to do now is just append. So I'm gonna say list dot append. What we're going to add here is a new test class. Now, just in case you skip the intro, our test class just simply has QInfo in the constructor and deconstructor so we can see that object's lifecycle. That's really all we want to do is see when this is created and when it's destroyed. Now, con for convenience here, I'm going to say list.last. So we're going to get the last item in that list, the one we literally just added, and I'm going to set object name. That way, when we print the object out, we can tell which one it actually is instead of just seeing a memory address. I'm going to say this is test. And let's go ahead and make a QString representation of our number. Now that we have that list, we simply need to return it. Special note. Q list is not a Q object, so we can simply return it and we're doing a copy here. We don't have to worry about that overhead that we have with Q object where we simply can't copy it. Now that we're able to generate a list of test classes, we want to really conveniently display them. So I'm just gonna make a simple function. We're going to display a list of pointers here. So what we're gonna do is say void display and we want our test list type def there let's call this list and we're just going to use the for each keyword we're going to say for each test pointer let's call this item in our list and that's just going to go through each item in the list and then allow us to you guessed it just print it out Super simple. Now we have a subtle problem here. Notice we're not testing to see if this pointer is even valid. We're just directly working with it. That could cause problems later as we're going to demonstrate. Now that we can get a list and display it, let's see this in action. So we are going to first things first, say test list and we want a list here and we're going to call our get list function, which is going to return that list. Now from here, we can go ahead and display it. So I'm just going to display our list. Notice there's a whole lot of copying going on. Generally in C++, I dislike copying, but I'm doing this for a reason just to show you that we can copy that queue list 
without any problems whatsoever. So let's just go ahead and demonstrate that. And there we go. So we have a problem. You see how we've got all of these constructed. And in case you're wondering what this object 00 is, that's the parent in the background. It doesn't have a parent. So this will not follow the parent-child relationship or that object tree, meaning we're not going to use Qt's built-in automatic memory management. We have a memory leak. We've got these items that are just going to exist in memory until we destroy them. And you can see here where we're displaying them, but they're not being deleted. Oh, okay, this is a problem. And this is a normal C++ problem. So let's look at a possible solution. First thing we're gonna do is we're going to say Qinfo. And let's say we want to delete them. So we're going to use Q delete all. Now this is an algorithm baked right into Qt. There is a little bit of a problem here. A lot of the algorithms are being deprecated, meaning you just really shouldn't use them. Why? Because a lot of the algorithms that are in Qt didn't exist in the C++ standard library, or dare I say the C++ standard library was subpar. That being said, a lot of that is really changing. So I put a link right here. Note that the standard template library functions, starting with Qt5, are pretty much starting to be phased out, with the exception, of course, QDeleteAll. Now, there is more than likely something out there, and you can re-implement this very easily, but it's already baked into Qt, and it's ridiculously simple. So this method is going to do the entire list. Let's go ahead and just demonstrate that. Now you see we have the full object lifecycle. Our application is still running. You see this little cursor blinking. But we've demonstrated that we have, using that algorithm, destroyed those objects. But we have another issue that we have just created, and this is unfortunate. Those items are not removed from our list. So if we try to use them again, we have a different issue. We have a bad pointer or what's called a dangling pointer, meaning that is a bad pointer and it will, of course, crash our application. And this gets a little bit, well, insane trying to figure out what just happened. In case you're curious, this is what's going on right here. We're not testing this pointer before we use it. We're just saying, hey, I'm trusting it. And guess what? This is a bad pointer. And program goes boom. So every time you use Q delete all, you're going to want to clear that list. You may be asking, well, why doesn't the algorithm just do it for me? Well, there's a reason for that. You may not want that functionality and that may introduce other issues. So you as the programmer are expected to know what to do. So once we've now cleared that list, let's go ahead and save run and it should run perfectly fine. Ta-da! No crash and our objects have gone through their full life cycle. Now there is another way. So I'm gonna comment this out. And when I do Q delete all, you see we are at one of two. And the first one wants a container. The second one wants a forward iterator and beginning and an end. That's right. So you can do a chunk of a list if you wanted to. I'm just going to pretty much do the same thing we just did using this way. So I'm going to say LST dot, oops, list dot begin and list dot end. So if you had special positions, you could go out and then start a custom beginning and custom ending and delete just a chunk of this list. But using this does basically the same thing as just clearing the entire container because we're starting at the beginning and then going to the end. Let's go ahead and demonstrate that. And there you go. It's really that simple. I'd love to have a long exhaustive conversation about this, but Q delete all is just, well, very simple, very easy to use. I hope you enjoyed this video. You can find the source code out on github.com. If you need additional help, myself and thousands of other developers are hanging out in the Void Realms Facebook group. This is a large group with lots of developers and we talk about everything technology related, not just the technology that you just watched. And if you want official training, I do develop courses out on udemy.com. This is official classroom style training. If you go out there and the course you're looking for is just simply not there, drop me a note. I'm either working on it or I will actually develop it. 
I will put a link down below for all three of those. And as always, help me help you. Smash that like and subscribe button. The more popular these videos become, the more I'll create and publish out on YouTube. Thank you for watching.